Hello, uh, welcome to the today class. Today I'd like to talk about 3D transformation. Uh, these are the uh, uh, today class objective. Uh, which that at the end of this class, uh, you can understand the difference between point and vector, which I actually define in the frame. Then uh, you can uh, understand, also you can represent the these transformation in a local and also global frame. So uh, these topics covered in some of the my, uh, uh, chapters of my book. If you want to know the details about the uh, today materials, I recommend you to go over the those chapters. You can find the much more details and uh, 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 materials over there. Also, the last time we talked about the 2D transformations. Also, we introduced homogeneous coordinate to combine the, this translation of rotation together within the one, uh, one uh, matrix. And also, the, as an example, so I talked about the idle base animation. The idle base approach is not the, not the common one, but the, I want, uh, since I talked about callback function, I used the, this idle callback function. And based on that, I, uh, I showed how you can do the, the animation, very simple animation. Uh, now, let's talk about today's material. So, so far I talked about the different transformations. Also, I talked about the, uh, this kind of mapping from the, the world space to the screen space, right? But these, uh, these actually, the issues boils down, uh, boils, uh, boils down to this question. Suppose that you have a, uh, you have a point uh, with a, this, this coordinate defined in this one, uh, within this space. And then I want to know the, what's the coordinate of this point uh, with, uh, with respect to the, this new new frame or or, or the, this new or uh, this <coughs> this coordinate system, that's actually the main question that we try to answer. That we we have tried to answer in, in this in this lecture. So uh, I mentioned that actually this mapping from world uh, world to screen actually also the uh, leads to the discussion. And basically, the these kind of issues uh, address a lot in uh, in uh, in our this classical mathematics, basically this uh, geometry, right? But you will know that actually coordinate is nothing but the, the just the uh, uh, introduced concept to represent the, this point and vector. In a way, they are just a uh, naming scheme. It means that we can change the name, right? For example, given this the, the point, uh, uh, let's say this actually the uh, point in the map or, uh, representing this kite, right? Some people say that this chi then we can also the, uh, 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 through this name we can pin out the, this uh, pinpoint this point at the map. But also some point some people can say that this point ha actually has a coordinate of the, this one something like that, right? So different people can use the data, uh, different this coordinate system. But the, uh, as you can see, these are the kind of name, right? Also the vectors are points actually the data is in, uh, uh, expressed by the coordinate. This common coordinate, right? But uh, we know that they are very different, right? Even though they, are, they can be represented in you know, this uh, the same coordinate system, we will actually uh, talk about the, uh, those issues to answer that question. So deeper, uh, uh, I talk uh, deeper answering to the, the main question that I have today that we have today. I'd like to talk about this vector space. So vector space. Uh, if you took the, the linear algebra, probably you already know there is the, the vector space. But uh, as a reminder, I briefly talk about this one. The vector space V over the this scalar field is nothing but uh, it consists of the, the a set of the uh, a set of the, the values where actually we uh, we uh, where the, the we define the uh, where this offer two offer is actually valid. Uh, for example, we can do the vector vector addition. It means that we just uh, grab two vector. I, I use the, this arrow notation to uh, encode the vector. If I draw two vector u v from the this the vector space, and then if we do the vector vector addition, the result also within that the vector space, right? Also, we can do the this scalar vector multiplication, the scalar vector and uh, this scaled vector also within the, the vector space. So uh, in this class, I will use uh, this vector notation here. The vector v is represented by the a, uh, v denoted as a b c. This the uh, element of this vector. I use uh, this kind of color major one. Sometimes I use the, this notation with this transpose. So since actually I will uh, I will define the many other the notation uh, on top of the, this uh, vector notation, you should aware of the, this the, uh, vector notation that I use the, this color major ordering. And then we can uh, we can do this kind of operation, right? The vector vector addition. We can do the we can do the com uh, basically the the commute of the rock here. Also, we can associate the here and there, right? The, the, the property is valid. 
We can also define the additive identity. Also, there we can define additive is inverse, something like that, right? And then uh, also the, we know that this color vector multiplication has to distribute. Uh, distribute. So given this uh, uh, summation of this scalar, uh, summation of the scalar to the, the vector, we can actually we can distribute that uh, uh, the, uh, that scalar term. But these are the uh, very basic uh, uh, property. And also we know that actually so far that uh, we can actually visualize this vector u, v, and w something like that. Also, there we can we know that actually if we add this vector u and v, we can have the this. Uh, we can actually have a uh, new vector from here to there. Uh, we do not have the W vector, right? So in a way, the vector represents some sort of motion. You can think, you, you can think that the car is moving from here, here to there, or here to there. Then we know that the car moved from here to there, right? And also there, we can, we can scale this vector, right? Uh, we can also use the, this antipos, uh, for represent, uh, antipos of scalar for representing this one. I already mentioned that here. Uh, so. The, for example, we use the, this uh, three tuple in the if the vector is in the three D three D space, right? Uh, we I use this transpose here, uh, yeah, something like that. And now I like to talk about vector basis. Vector basis is a subset of vector, uh, subset of vector that uh, that can be used to generate any other element in at that uh, at that uh, the vector space, right? Uh, but, uh, but by using the just addition and scalar multiplication. So for example. If the, some people say that uh, some people say that this is actually basis vector from the v1 to vn, so we said that this basis vector, the basis set is actually linearly dependent. If there there are certain constants such that way, some of some of the actually the is the uh, weight is sum of those vector turn out to be zero, right? Why this linear dependent? Let me just briefly show it here. Uh, basically, there if this equation is valid, then we can say that for example. A3 multiplied by vector B3 is turned out to be the uh, summation of A1, C1, and blah blah blah, like that, right? It means that this vector B3 can be uh, represented by the, uh, the linear combination of other vectors, right? So that's why this vector is linearly dependent on other vectors, right? So the, this basis vector is linear. Uh, uh, if we, this equation satisfies, this is actually linearly dependent, it means that we can take it out this vector, right? This basis vector is not really uh, this is not compact, right? We can reduce down that one to define the, the vector basis. Since actually, the, without that vector, we can generate other element, right? So otherwise, we can say that the, the basis set is the linearly linearly independent, right? In that case, this linear ind independent basis set with i element uh, set to the span on i dimensional vector space, right? So there, for example, we know that for the 2D case, 2D dimensional case, we just need a two two dimensional base vector, right? For example, so for the just for 2D space like this, right? Then we can define the i i vector like the this the uh, one comma zero and j vector, let's say something like the zero comma one, right? You know that actually this actually the along the x-axis and this one for the y-axis, right? Based on this one, we can uh, we can actually uh, generate any other vectors within the space, right? These are the two common uh, basic vectors in the two-dimensional two space, and we know that they are linearly independent. And uh, once we actually have this linearly independent basis, we can actually uniquely name the certain point and vector, as I mentioned here, right? For example, uh, this is done by assigning vector coordinate, vector coordinate, right? For example, for this point, we need to say that along with this i vector, we need to move the, that, uh, this amount, right? This is a coordinate, right? You can say that this x1, along the y coordinate, we can move that amount, right? You can say that the y1 coordinate, you can say this is a coordinate, right? Same thing can be done here. Suppose that you have actually arbitrary x vector here, then in the 3D many cases, this x vector can be represented by uh, this. Uh, uh, in this case, we have three three, three dimensional case. There are only the three uh, different base vector. Uh, the weight is sum of those the three uh, the base vector. And then this equation can be represented by the, this matrix form. Uh, basically, the b one b two b three are actually the base vector. C one c two c three is the coordinate, right? You can see that here the b one is the color major one. Looks like there is just uh, uh, basically this section is the three by three matrix here. Uh, we need to expand this V one into the, the color major one. 
for example, uh, uh, so for that, uh, in this case, actually, uh, I will say that the three dimensional cases, right? Then we can define i vector, j vector, i vector, j vector, and k vector, right? The three dimensional spaces corresponding to the x, x, y, and z axis, right? Then the v, uh, the v1, if this is uh, just a v1, v2, v3, right? Then i vector could be the 1, 0, 0, right? This is x vector, right? Uh, the, the vector along the x vector. This is the 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, something like that, right? And then, then, uh, uh, basically, based on this one, we do the matrix, back, matrix vector multiplication, right? Uh, in this case, we, uh, for this one, we multiply the C1, for, or for the, uh, the uh, uh, first element of the V2, uh, V2 we do the, we, we, do, we, come, we multiply that one with the, this one, so on, right? Then you can see that actually the, this matrix representation equivalent to, to this one, actually. I recommend you to, if you're unclear about this equivalence, I, I recommend you to, Sit down and expand this this one into matrix one. Then do the some uh do the actually some uh, calculus. Then you will see that they actually equal each other. And uh, here actually I will say that this three by three matrix as a so, uh this the uh, uh, v of t something like that right. And then see I use the bold to bold to indicate that this the uh the the tuples of the scalar they interpret as coordinate right. In other words, see the bold c is represent this coordinate actually. So this is the matrix, 3 by 3 matrix. This is actually the uh, uh, 3 by 1 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, mat, uh, the vector. So, uh, so uh, algebraically, we can show that uh, we can actually expand, we can represent this vector with this kind of one, and also the, in this form, right? But let's try to understand this one. So one simple interpretation of those equations is that uh, given these three basic vector v1, v2, v3, we scaled it we as an amount of coordinate, right? C1, V1, and so on. So if by we sum, summing up those three vectors, we can get the, we can represent the U vector, right? By summing up at that way, and then we can represent the big X vector, right? Uh, this is the quite valid. Also, since the vector, we can also do the, some other, arbitrary, we can position the vector in an arbitrary location, and then we can, uh, we can actually have this kind of one, right? This is also equally valid interpretation, why? Basically, vector doesn't have any origin, right? That's why we can draw the vector in arbitrary places. We can actually do, we can do this kind of calculation. On the other hand, uh, the points are very different, right? Conceptually, points are vectors are very different. So here, a point P dot, I will uh, to differentiate the point of vector I use this uh, the dot in, uh, dot uh, for the point P dot is a particular place in the space, right? On the other hand, vector B. Uh, 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 vector v is describing a uh, direction of motion independent from independent to the disposition, right? So uh, they are quite different quantity. So since they are uh, quite different quantities, so uh, available available operator to those vector and points are different. For example, uh, given these two vector, we can add two vector, right? Then uh, based add, all adding these two vector, just representing kind of concatenated motion of the two vector, right? If we're adding them together, then just the summation of those two vectors is kind of concatenated the motion, right? Also, we can also the multiply vector by some factor, right? Even this, so if we scale scale the vector two times, it is also the indicating kind of scaled motion, right? But if we apply those approaches to point, it doesn't make sense at all, right? Uh, if we adding two point, what's the meaning of that, right? So the these operations valid for the vector, but not for the point. Uh, but some operation also makes sense for the point, right? For example, uh, we can represent the, uh, <clears throat> given these two points, uh, Q dot and P dot, and then uh, if we actually moving from here to there, obviously that's a vector, right? And then moving from here to there, actually so, uh, actually subtraction from the point to, uh, between two points, right? If we actually the, uh, subtract the Q from P, we indicate actually the, uh, his, uh, the motion, the direction from here to there, right? So uh, uh, by uh, manipulating this one, uh, virtually also the, we can say that given this point Q, uh, if we add in the motion, then we arrive at the point, new point P, right? So that actually we can do the, this kind of operation. Given the point, adding the vector, we got the new point, something like that, right? These are actually valid uh, 
uh, operation for the point of the between the point and vector. So again, the, the main key distinction between vector and points are point absolute, while the vectors are relative, right? So there, we know that vector space is, is actually completely, that can be completely defined by the set of base vector. We'll, I already showed that, right? Uh, uh, but on the other hand, the space that a point lives in uh, requires their absolute origin, right? So that's why we need to introduce that, that the point, uh, the absolute the point, right? We call it the origin, right? So as a result, to define the arbitrary point P dot, we need to introduce the, this the origin, O dot, uh, plus this actually the, uh, the weight sum of the basic vector, right? We can do that, right? So before we can, uh, if we add in the uh, vector to the point, you will end up with the new, new point, right? Just basically the same, same machinery, given the point, uh, by adding the vector, we got the new point, something like that, right? And then we, uh, if we have expanded this, uh, this formation into the matrix form, we can actually, we can derive the, this, uh, this matrix form. In this case, for the 3D case, three-dimensional case, we have three basic vector, one origin. In the end, it's actually the uh, four by four matrix. Again, this vector is column major. So if we actually, the, if I actually the, uh, expand this this vector origin into here, I can say that uh, we can see that actually same thing, but it's now four by four matrix. And for origin, we can have arbitrary origin, right? Two, three, four, something like that, right? But I said that four, uh, four by four, right? But actually later on, you don't need to worry about it here right now, but there, you can see that actually this could be 0, 0, uh, 1 here. This is the B1, B2, B3, and origin, right? And then if you are adding the distance, uh, if you're multiplying this vector with the coordinate C1, then basically for this C1, it will be uh, applied to the, this vector, right? Then you can see that, uh, yeah, that's very intuitive way, right? You can see that actually this coordinate will be applied to the, this vector. So the, the uh, C1, B, B1, right? In the similar way, you can see that actually they are mapping to there, right? C1, C2, and C, C1, C2, C3, and 1, actually. Uh, now, you need to see that why we have to have the, this 1, right? Why we have to have 1 here? You will see that this, uh, this coordinate will be uh, mapping to the here, right? If you do the, this, the row, uh, uh, this, uh, if you do the multiple distance row and this, uh, uh, this vector, you will see that this coordinate will be applied to the there, right? So this origin, right? So since uh, by introducing one, you can actually by doing that, you can see that actually you you actually allow the this the uh, this the uh, adding the origin. In other words, the translation, right? Now some of you may recall that uh, may see that this is very uh, similar structure with the using the homogeneous coordinate, right? So there actually the, uh, uh, basically. Uh, that's why we used the uh, homo introduced homogeneous coordinate before. So uh, by using the this, uh, this one, we can actually now encode the, this we, we encode the, this the additional of the point and also this the, this one within the one matrix actually. And I will step back to this why this could be the zero zero here. Again, now that we said the point live in affine space, actually affine space. This is uh, also the affine basis set, also called as a frame. We, uh, I said that the point is defined in the frame, right? But this is also the mathematical formulation, frame, or the uh, special Euclidean group of three. So base three is the three-dimensional space, as SA of three. So in at that case, we have a three-dimensional basis, three different basis vector with the origin, actually. These are points, these are the uh, one. This is a four by four matrix, affine spaces. And uh, based on this frame, we can define the actually vector and point together. Uh, for example, if we in this case in this uh, use the same this affine spaces, we are using the coordinate of the C1, C2, C3, with the uh, uh, and then the first coordinate turn out to one. You can see that this encoder this will adding the origin, right? So it will be the encoder point, right? But what if we actually have the zero for the first coordinate, right? It means that we cancel out the, this origin, right? It, uh, uh, then it actually the, the summation of the base vector, it, it just in, uh, create another vector, another motion, right? So by looking at the first coordinate, if the first coordinate turns out to be one, it's encoding the point. On the other hand, if the zero, it, it could be the, actually the, uh, the vector. So basically based on this one, we can differentiate uh, point and vector. In the same way, 
I said that this uh, uh, ijk vector, right? Since delta vector is just at the zero, zero, zero actually there. And then uh, this simple visualization of vector, uh, this uh, uh, vector basis. Vector basis is basically if you actually have three uh, dimensional the vector, uh, we can actually we can uh, it define this kind of one. But it can be a, a, anyway, right? It's just encoding the the uh, direction of the just the uh, those one. But actually, if we have origin, we actually pin out that uh, the, uh, this direction in a particular location, right? So at that case, we call it this affine basis. I would say this is a kind of consistent model. Uh, uh, also, it works very well with our intuition. For example, we know that actually the uh, <laughs> subtract with, uh, before we, we say that actually subtract a point uh, from the other point will be end up with uh, the vector, right? If we do that, we got the some coordinate and the first coordinate turn out to be the, uh, will be the, uh, will be the actually zero, right? So basically, the, by taking the, by performing subtraction between two points, it will end up with a vector, right? And adding a vector, adding a vector to the point will be uh, generate another point, right? Why? If also, you can see that actually that there will be the, some coordinate, right? By adding one to zero, it will be the one, in the, encoding the actually the uh, point. So basically, the, our intuition also works quite well with the, this the, uh, affine frame. And you can do the some other one. I mean, you, you, you can multiply a vector by a scalar, scalar uh, if you multiply a vector with scalar, then you, you still get rid of the, the vector, right? If you scale the, this one, still the zero component will be the zero, right? That's a vector. But if you scale the point, then obviously the first coordinate will have the first, if you scale the uh, point, then the first coordinate will have the some uh, add, uh, some other value other than 0 and 1, so then it doesn't make sense in our case. So obviously the scaling point doesn't make sense, right? Again, the before we, we introduce homogeneous coordinate, right? Uh, but some people may say that it, should, it may be arbitrary, but there, it, it's not really matter, uh, mainly because that the coordinate itself is not intrinsic quantity. It's not a geometric uh, the quantity, basically it's just name scheme. So, Depending on the, our uh, the, the perspective of defining the those points, we can actually have a different coordinates. So, we, uh, so at that case, at, at, in this perspective of the uh, the affine frame using the first coordinate, here differentiating point and vector, it also the, uh, works fine. And then I would say that uh, for three dimensional cases, actually, I would say that this three D homogeneous. Sometimes I I would say that three D homogeneous coordinate. Uh, for the, this, uh, uh, since they are in the this three D space, while they are also the first uh, uh, first dimensional space, including the this point and vector. So now let's let us uh, talk about uh, let's look at this issue. Sometimes also the uh, uh, let me see that uh, I mentioned the paper. Uh, if we actually the adding two point, it doesn't make sense, right? If we scale the point, it doesn't make sense, right? But if, in this case, it, it can be make sense, right? Suppose that you have two points, right? You actually do the, the weighted sum of two points as an amount of alpha 1, alpha 2, right? And then you can have the, this one, right? You have some coordinate, and then the coordinate uh, turn out to the alpha 1, alpha 2. But if we actually restrict the sum, so the weighted sum of the alpha 1, alpha 2 turn out, uh, will be the 1, then it will be become the, uh, uh, this, this one, and it will be the, the uh, point, right? Uh, basically, if we do the this way to sum in this way, uh, this is actually known as affine combination, turn out will generate the point. Uh, this actually the uh, algebraic uh, uh, explanation, but now let's look at the, some uh, the geometrical explanation here, the visualization. You, we actually have a point, two point, one point, two point. You, we know that actually if we do the linear equation between them, right, then we will get the, another new point, right? Basically, the, this affine combination, nothing but uh, corresponding to the actually combine these two points as an amount of alpha 1, alpha 2. It's kind of the interpolating you know, within the list of uh, two points, right? We, the, the generate of, of is the, the point generate uh, <laughs> point generated by this affine combination will be ended up with the, within the list, uh, this line actually. Also, the, you can see that this can be extended to the other number of points, three or four or more, uh, more number of points. Uh, later on, we will talk about actually the very uh, very central coordinate, which is actually the extension of the, these affine combinations. We will talk about this one later on. 
Okay, now I'd like to talk about this affine transformation. So sometimes we can also apply the transformation, right? Uh, uh, as we did the 2D, trans uh, 2D transformation uh, uh, at the last time, right? Suppose that uh, we have the point, P dot, right? We, this, uh, this point, if we have the coordinate of this one, C1, C2, C3, and 1, also this uh, affine frame, uh, three basic vector with origin, right? And then I want to actually, I want to trans translate or the rotate of this coordinate, right? Then, uh, then in this case, I used the affine transformation, this the four by four matrix. The last time we talked about three by three, the affine transformation. That's the further two two uh, two D cases. For three D cases, actually, the, we can extend it to three D. Uh, we can have this affine transformation. Uh, we can have some arbitrary number here. But the last row, we have the zero 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 one. Uh, then, uh, uh, then you can see that actually if we apply the, this uh, this affine matrix to the, the point, we can still have we can still generate points, right? But in this case, one thing that you can notice is that we apply the, this transformation. Let's say a, we apply this a in between uh, this the coordinate, also the uh, uh, in between the coordinate, also this frame, right? This may uh, may uh, this may uh, come across very odd to you. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I will explain why we, we uh, uh, actually why this is actually the the possible. So basically, here we just maintain the this point actually defined in that frame, right? When we do the this translation, everything should be in the same the uh, same frame, right? So actually, the frame is still unchanged, the same thing. But we only want to change coordinate. That's why we apply the this the uh, this matrix A uh, 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 here actually. Also, the for example. <laughs> We commonly actually, the, when you actually have a coordinate and you want to apply the A matrix, let's say the trans transformation, we apply the, this, the, we perform the, apply the matrix A to the coordinate, right? We don't have any the, uh, local frame here uh, like, uh, uh, like we did here, right? But in our cases, typically we use the IJK, the canonical base vector, and the origin of could be the, the, the common one. Yeah, here. The origin we can use the what is the most one of the uh, common origin, right? You might agree that all, one of the most common origin is the zero, 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 and one, right? Y is one. This is a point. Origin is point. That's why we have one, right? This i, x, and y, the canonical basis vector, uh, x, y, g, right? Then you can see that this matrix is actually the identity matrix i, right? So we don't need to actually write down the here, right? So basically, the, when you did the, when you when you do the, the trans, uh, transformation here A to C, there should be the local frame, the summer frame, right? In the case, it, it was to be the identity matrix, so we don't need to write down the, the identity matrix. So that also the uh, our prior convention also works fine with the within this frame. In summary, when you do the affine summer transformation, then you actually put it here uh, in between this frame and the, this co uh, coordinate. And in a way, they actually, they're, when you do the affine transformation from a here to there, we didn't change the frame. So that's why uh, this actually mapping to the, this illustration. We just do the trans, uh, transform within that frame. Uh, now, uh, let's look at another example. I want to, the, uh, we might have the diff, uh, series of the, the transformation. I want to translate a, a point of vector with a T, followed by the rotating with R, right? Then this series can be represented by this equation. Suppose that the further transformation, we actually have a point P dot, uh, which has a coordinate C within the certain the frame. Let's say this W T uh, uh, W. Uh, I, 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 I will just say the W T here for this matrix, the affine matrix. And then after transformation, we got the uh, P dot uh, uh, P prime. This actually the the coordinate after transformation, and this one will have this one, right? Given the C coordinate C, we apply the trans translation and then we apply the rotation and uh, those are the defined in the, this, the still same prior the frame, WT, right? And then we can associate in this way, right? This way, that way. It means that I first apply the, the transformation to the C within the same frame. Then we might, uh, after this the transform the translation, I got the C dot. Uh, then I apply the rotation, right? Then I got the, the new coordinate, C, uh, double prime, right? Uh, within that frame, right? That's actually one uh, interpretation, right? Uh, that's actually here, uh, given a point, I actually keep, uh, keep changing, right? 
within that frame, right? But another one is that I can also the I can change the the frames, right? Uh, that actually the explained here. Alternative way of looking at this e equation here is that if you cannot see the, this text very clearly, uh, there uh, you can also open up the lecture note. You can look at the le uh, lecture note uh, this PDF file. So here the same thing. Before the trans transformation, we got the, this P dot. Uh, uh, having the coordinate of C at that uh, WT frame, right? And then with the translate, after the tra transformation, we got this equation, right? Even C, uh, translate, rotate, they are defined in the, this WT frame, but we can associate the, this matrix in that way, here and there, right? In this case, I want to change the, actually the uh, frame. Then, if we did it here, then it will be, it, it will generate another frame. In this case, I said that M dot T, and then also I uh, associate this way. I also generate another another frame. In this case, this is located by the uh, E dot T. But the here, I actually maintain the, this coordinate, right? <clears throat> so this one is that I maintain the coordinate, but I keep changing the frame, right? These are the, actually the uh, that uh, that way we can we can realize this view. So these are the actually equivalent of uh, interpretation of the same transformations. But the left one, you said you didn't change the, the frame, right? So in this case, this tr uh, transformation uh, occurred in the uh, single, single global frame. On the other hand, this one actually we keep changing the frame, right? So I would say that this local frame, the point is to define this local frame after after trans uh, transformation, we have changed the local frame, another local frame, right? Since actually frames keep changing. So these are actually the valid interpretation. So depending on your application, your task, you can actually adopt this approach, this view or that view, something like that. But anyway, we can achieve the same goal. So uh, at the beginning of the, this lecture material, I, I actually suggest this question. I start with this question, right? I actually had a one point defined in the uh, uh, defined in a frame. In this case, w dot t with the coordinate of g, right? I want to know that what's the actually coordinate in the another another frame. In this case, another frame is defined in the uh, g of t. <laughs> that was our initial uh, 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 question. How can we compute the, this coordinate within that within that frame, right? Uh, to answer this one, we need to know the relationship between these two frames between this w t and g t, right? So suppose that we actually had a this kind of relationship, right? If we uh, uh, if we do the some sort of translate, uh, there are certain relationship between this G and W, right? If we do the some translation, uh, uh, that relationship represents by the matrix S, right? Uh, starting from the, this relationship, if we if we actually the reformulate along the, this uh, W dot T, then we can have uh, this equation, right? Then if we apply this equation to there, uh, this is nothing but here. We starting from the uh, same equation here. Uh, uh, this p, uh, point P is rep uh, with the C uh, coordinate in the frame of WT, and uh, we plug in this equation to the here. That way, we trans we transform the we actually we we what we can see the the coordinate in a different uh, frame. In this case, the uh, G of T. Then, if we group them here, then we can compute the another uh, new coordinate defined in that frame. So basically, the, uh, based on the, our the, uh, prior uh, this approach, we can uh, we can actually answer the, this question in an easy way once we know the relationship between these two frames, right? So basically, the, once we know the uh, relationship between the uh, between viewable world and this window, we can also the, uh, apply this approach even to there. Uh, uh, but at the time, actually, uh, we actually took the different approach, but the that approach can be generalized also to uh, fit into this uh, this relationship. So I hope that uh, uh, by now I hope that you can understand the difference between point and vector, and to differentiate it uh, 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 this uh, in a in an explicit way by using the zero and one as, as a homogeneous coordinate. We actually the introduced a fine frame of the frame, and then also the you can understand the. You can represent this transformation in a different uh, different view. Uh, one is that local, also the glo global frame, but they are equivalent each other, but just a uh, different valid in, uh, interpretation. So I know that the today material may be a little bit uh, a little bit uh, abstract, and some of you may already unclear about this one. 
Uh, if you're unclear, actually, you can also go over, uh, go over my, uh, my book. There could be the, uh, if you look at the, the, the chapter over there, you can see the more detailed descriptions. Also, there, if still that's unclear, you can also the, uh, send me an e uh, send, uh, you can also the post the question at the KLMS. Also, you can even send me an email. And also, there, to help you to understand better about this one, uh, basically, I give you the, this the, uh, uh, quiz assignment. You, uh, if you go to the, the KLMS homepage, you will see that this quiz assignment spec. But it's, a, it's a nothing but just a, if you understand this material, just applying this uh, material uh, uh, in a, uh, <laughs> one by one to this problem, you can answer this one. So it's nothing but I'm just showing that some of the merry-go-around cases. You can see there are a lot of the transformation, right? So some of the model, in this case, first define in the modeling space, uh, that's put in the, some sort of world in this merry-go-around scene, and so called that some uh, point define the modeling space as a coordinate something, and it asks that what's the corresponding coordinate within the, uh, at the different this frame, something like that. So to do that, you just need to uh, understand the, this concept and, and apply them to the, uh, this one. So probably you can just uh, write down you can just write down this uh, the solution uh, and uh, with uh, with a pencil that you can take a folder and uh, you can actually the send that picture or the PDF file to the and uh, to the TA or also the upload to the, the KLMS. Look at the actually quiz assignment this back at the KLMS homepage. Okay, so I wish that you can understand the, uh, some of those concepts and then next time we'll talk about the another modeling transformation, modeling and viewing transformation. And then if you understand this material, then uh, basically you can understand those, uh, uh, those topics very well. So actually I will keep building up this concept. And then this is regular homework. Uh, before watching the YouTube video, uh, go, uh, basically go over the, this, the lecture slide. That way you can, uh, you can actually, adjust, you can actually the, make your, yourself friendly to the, the lecture material. And then watch to C-graph, C-graph Asia and submit your, the summary. Uh, before the every Monday class, not Tuesday, the Monday class. And also coming up with the questions and then, yeah, you need to submit the two, uh, two times during the whole semester. Okay, that's it. Uh, uh, thanks for the listening and then uh, uh, take care of that. Bye!